I'd like to begin our service today um, giving you a blessing, okay? Uh, last week we kicked off our Advent series, and remember Advent means coming or revival, which we'll talk about here in a few moments as well. Uh, but we're in this Advent series, and we're looking at the attributes uh, of God uh, expressed or encapsulated in the coming of Jesus Christ. And last week we talked about hope. This week we're going to talk about peace, okay? And so I'd like to start our time together um, using a passage of Scripture or blessing you with a passage of Scripture uh, from Paul found in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 16. And it says this, May the Lord of peace himself give you peace, always in every way. The Lord be with all of you. Now we can use that as a benediction. We can use that as our closing, you know, as we go out. Uh, we could do that as well. But I want to start our service by hopefully allowing you to be, or by you being blessed by, the, by this powerful passage of scripture and just kind of set the tone for your worship experience uh, here this morning or here this afternoon or whenever you're viewing this video. But I would like for you to just embrace that and allow that to be uh, the, the thread that, that, that ties this whole uh, worship encounter together for you. I'm going to lead us into a word of prayer and then we're going to just sing some praises to God and then we're going to have some teaching of the word. So if you would, just bow your heads and your hearts and let me lead us into a word of prayer. Father, we give you great thanks that we can be here today and worship you regardless if it's in spirit. Uh, or we might be in person, whatever. It doesn't matter because you are in spirit and you told us that it doesn't matter, that uh, we would worship you in spirit and truth. And so that's what we're doing here today. I thank you for each person that's viewing this. I pray a blessing over them. I pray that this blessing of 2 Thessalonians 3.16 would just warm their hearts. I pray that it would set their minds uh, in this sense of anticipation of encountering you. So we pray that all that we do here today would just bring you glory. Pray that our hearts would just be tipped towards you and that we would exalt your, exalt your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in your name we pray, amen.
Would you please turn with me to uh, Luke chapter 2 and just kind of put your thumb right there because we're going to look at another passage of Scripture again, the Christmas story, another aspect of the Christmas story found in uh, Luke's gospel, uh, a very familiar gospel that we look at uh, around this time of the year. Uh, but if you would, just kind of get just kind of get your Bibles ready so that you can follow along with me. We're going to look at verses 8 through 20. But before we do that, I just want to share a couple of comments here. Um, I want to share with you, I don't know if you've heard this before, but Christmas in Finland, <laughs> yes, Finland, Christmas in Finland's a pretty big deal. And I want, this is kind of interesting. Um, there's, they have this tradition that happens every single year. And what happens is since the 1300s, okay? So every single year since the 1300s, there's this tradition, and it's a very serious tradition, where um, for, you know, going on for more than 700 years, where the declaration of Christmas peace is is uh, red, okay? So this, this declaration of Christmas peace is red. And each year at noon on Christmas Eve in a town uh, called Tur Turku, Turku? <laughs> got my tongue kind of wrapped up there, Turku, um, every year on Christmas Eve at noon in the town of Turku, uh, the Christmas uh, peace, the declaration of Christmas peace is red from uh, an historic mansion at the center of town uh, in the old Great Square, okay? And it's broadcast on the radio. I mean, this is a big deal. It's broadcast on the radio and television. Uh, you can stream it on the internet now. Uh, you can even go um, and do a little Google search and literally see this. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, but it's read out loud to remind people of the Christmas peace and that the Christmas peace has officially begun and to advise people to spend the festive period. Now get this to spend the festive period in harmony, to uh, threaten offenders with harsh punishment, and to wish all a Merry Christmas. Okay? That, the wording, I'm going to read it to you, but the wording is a little bit stronger. But again, this is what they do. So again, the town of Tur uh, Turku, uh, on Christmas Eve at noon, uh, at the old Great Square, they get up and they read the Christmas Declaration of Peace. It's taken very serious. It's been done over 700 years. Or, I'm sorry, yes, 700 years. And... They, it's broadcast through different mediums, and it's taken, again, very seriously. And it's literally to uh, promote harmony, to threaten a, a people that's going to offend that harmony, um, and to wish all a Merry Christmas. Now, let me read it to you, and I'm just going to read it word for word. It says this, Tomorrow, God willing, the graceful celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, and thus is declared a peaceful Christmas time to all by advising devotion and to behave otherwise quietly and peacefully because he who breaks the peace and violates the peace of Christmas by any illegal or improper behavior shall under aggravating circumstances be guilty and punished according to what the law and statutes prescribe for each and every offense separately. Finally, a joyous Christmas feast is wished to all inhabitants of the city. They literally read that They've read that for over 700 years. They stand up and do this custom. And it's not just a custom or a tradition, but it's something that they believe in. It's something that they act upon. So they're saying, we want there to be peace. We want there to be harmony. And if you're going to threaten that, there's going to be severe punishment for that. Okay? So they take this very seriously. It's incredible. I, I think it's just such, so incredible. And that if someone uh, violates that, they're going to be dealt with uh, harshly. What a great way to usher Christmas in, though. <laughs> what a great way to usher Christmas in and to remind, uh, remind everyone the, of Christ's coming and the peace that He is going to bring in this world. So, uh, you know, that's, what we've, that's where we're at today. That's where we were last week. We kicked off this Advent series. And remember, Advent is, uh, if we just want to recap that word, it literally means coming or revival. All right? And it's the season marked by what? If you remember, it's the season marked by expectation, by waiting, by anticipation, by longing. Okay, so there are these. Um, uh, this goes goes with uh, this sense of Advent. Again, we can't stress it off. It's not an extension of Christmas. It's not just some tradition that we tack on, that we just you know some festive thing that we that we need to celebrate. But it's something that that reminds us. It's something that hopefully will give us pause. It's something that will help us 
rediscover, as we are, the series is called uh, this, this, uh, th- this year, a rediscover Christmas. And it's a time, again, to look back in celebration of Jesus' coming, which you and I live on this side of Jesus' first coming, uh, His birth. But we look in anticipation of His second coming, the return for Jesus to uh, bring home His children, the return for His people. And during Advent, again, we both we wait, okay? We both wait actively, uh, assured and hopeful, this assured and hopeful waiting. And each week, we're focusing on a different attribute of God uh, representing the coming of Jesus. Last week, we talked about hope. This week, we're going to talk about peace. Again, these are attributes of God and, again, uh, represented in the coming of Jesus. Last week was hope. This week is peace. Next week will be joy. And then the following week will be love. And then Christmas Eve, lo and behold, uh, it's coming fast, right? Uh, Christmas Eve will be about the coming of, the Christ, of coming of Christ, His birth. So this week we're going to look at somebody different. We're going to look at some different characters because uh, each week we're going to, that's what we're doing. We're looking at different biblical characters. If you remember last week we talked about Simeon and Anna and we talked about how it really didn't surprise them. This, this promise, the hope that they had really didn't surprise them. They didn't need some angelic uh, uh, announcement to say that Jesus is coming, but they were waiting. They were waiting in anticipation. Patient, they were longing again, again, those attributes uh, of Advent that we're celebrating. But when we think of peace, so we're going to look at something different today. When we think of peace embodying the Christmas story, um, one of the so some of the characters we think about w- could be the shepherds, okay? And we're going we're to look at the shepherds um, today, but just a couple things about the shepherds they were the most unlikely recipients of God's of this incredible message, okay? It, it's very interesting that God would come to the shepherds. Uh, to announce the birth of the Christ, okay? The, the Messiah has come. They were kind of the, one of the first ones uh, to be clued in on that, uh, of the birth announcement, all right? And when you look at the shepherds, it's, it's very interesting. Um, there's some things there that just, uh, for them to be the first recipients, I think you and I would say, man, that just doesn't add up. But to God, it does. And so let's lean into that and let's look at that. But first, let's look at our passage of Scripture found in Luke chapter 2. And we are going to pick up in verse 8, okay? And we'll read through verse 20. And it says this, In the same regions, shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over the flock, over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, a Savior, who is Messiah the Lord, was born for you in the city of David. This will be the sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel praising God and singing, or saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to people He favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the feeding trough. After seeing them, they reported the message they were told about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary was treasuring up all these things in her heart and immediate, and meditating on them. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard, just as they had been told. So within this passage of Scripture that we're looking at today, uh, we read about the shepherds. We read about how uh, they were the first recipients. We read about their response. But let's just take a few moments and take a look at, at the shepherds here, okay? Um, you know, in, these, in this passage of Scripture, there's a lot of stuff here that we can take a look at. First, uh, the first thing we look at um, is what happened. You know, an angel appears in the sky. This angel appears to them in the middle of the night, appears to them. Now, guys, you, you, I think we have to understand this. Um, I think it's so easy for us as we read this story around Christmas time, it becomes very sentimental, it becomes very intimate to us. And I think sometimes we gloss over some of the things that took place, okay? Some of the things that took place uh, and how the people, the recipients of, the, of, of that time must have felt. I don't know how you would feel if you were out in the middle of the night uh, doing something, whatever it may be, and an angel appeared in the sky and began to talk to you. I, for one, would be just a bit freaked out, okay? I'm just going to say it. I'm going to go on record and say it. I'll be the first to come out and say it, okay? 
I would be a bit freaked out, okay? So here you have these shepherds, they're tending to their sheep, and this angel appears and starts talking to them, okay? And let's be very clear, uh, because sometimes our, our songs and things like that kind of combine some stuff, and we miss out on some of, the, of really what happened here. But one angel came and was, begin- and, and was announcing this, the, giving this message to these shepherds. Then all of a sudden, the armies of heaven, as one translation would say, the hosts of heaven, um, they, were, they were joined with just multitudes and multitudes of angels. I can't imagine what that would have been like. So you got this one angel that's proclaiming the message, right, to the shepherds, and then all of a sudden you have multitudes and multitudes, and again, uh, some translation says the hosts of angels, which literally means, probably a better trans, uh, translation is the armies of heaven, literally armies of heaven, are surrounding this, the, this one angel, and they begin, to, they begin to say, okay, we say they begin to sing. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe they begin to sing or say or whatever, but they begin, you know, probably singing, declaring what? Declaring the glory of God. Declaring the glory of God in heaven and peace on earth to humanity, okay? Can you imagine the sound Not only just the presence of an angel and then the presence of the armies of heaven, the hosts uh, hosts and hosts of angels, but then you have this sound. And I can't imagine, the only thing I can imagine uh, as I picture this is is just things reverberating, reverberating. you know know how you hear some music and they get the bass thumping and you got some some other music and you have it turned up and you can just feel it? Can you imagine what the shepherds must have felt like when this angel was proclaiming in the armies, came around, they're singing, they're singing or saying, glory to God in heaven and, and peace on earth, goodwill to men. Could you imagine what that must have sounded like and what that must have felt like? And maybe it happened in all kinds of different languages. I don't know um, I, what singing or speaking, whatever, but I can, you know, in harmony, not in har- who knows. But all I can think of is, it must have been this incredible sound. And then, of course, you have the audience, which is what we're going to look at today. Uh, this grand announcement doesn't come to the VIPs of the world, doesn't come to the famous, doesn't come to the celebrities, doesn't come to the church, doesn't come to the Pharisees and the scribes, it doesn't come to the, you know, to the, to the temple. Uh, it does, this message comes out in the middle of this field, the potter's field, if you, if you go to Israel, and, and that's, what they, that's what they call it, the potter's field. And, you, and there's, you go there and they show you this area where it would have happened, and it's just so... Um, overwhelming in a sense when you're when you're there and you see it but it comes it it comes in the middle of the night to these shepherds now what do we know about shepherds number one they were the most ordinary plain people not even just ordinary plain people but they were also looked at kind of down upon okay they were considered dirty they were considered kind of crude and crusty Um, they 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 you know they were just kind of they weren't the upper echelon of society if we could say that all right and yet, this is the God chooses this audience to deliver the most one of the most incredible messages on earth that the the child the Messiah has come and has been born in Bethlehem. Why the shepherds? Why the shepherds? Well, we can you know there's a couple of things we could look at. Number one, um, th- there's there's some biblical threads that we can tie together here. Number one, the shepherds remind us uh, that the patriarchs of Israel. The patriarchs of Israel. Who were the patriarchs of Israel? Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, those guys, our forefathers. Okay, they were nomadic shepherds themselves. They were nomadic uh, people. They, they, uh, they, they didn't really have a home per se. They just traveled. They had big, big flocks, okay, of a lot of cattle, sheep, that kind of stuff, animal tenders, uh, roaming ranchers, if we could say it that way, of the ancient world. But Abraham was the original recipient of God, okay? So the shepherds kind of remind us, kind of ties a picture there, kind of ties a thread uh, to to the patriarchs, the ancestors. Um, Again, Isaac, uh, um, Isaac, Jacob, and beyond, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and and David. Remember David, King David, who would have been, who would become the most glorious king of Israel, um, was a shepherd himself, okay? So they were kind of this every man. There was nothing special about them, no entitlement, no pride, uh, there wasn't really any arrogance, no religious bloating, none of that kind of stuff. Um, and it kind of fits right into the whole narrative, if you think about it, because Jesus came. Jesus, his message when he was traveling around was to who? To the people. 
to the people that were broken, to the people, the outcasts of society, to the people that were um, not considered the upper echelon. I mean, he clashed with what we would call the upper echelon of his time, of his society, right? Um, they, were, they weren't refined people of, the civil, of, of that civilization by any means, but instead Jesus came to those that were truly broken uh, and recognized their brokenness, okay? The ones that were demon-possessed, the ones that were uh, the tax collectors, the ones that society really looked down upon. And so this whole, me- this whole, uh, this, this, this whole narrative kind of fits in that, that God would come to the shepherds because it would really tie into who Jesus would, would really minister to. And, and we could say that, or we could probably deduce that the reason is that those are the people that typically embrace a message. Um, the ones that are more in the upper echelon, and again, not, this is just generalizing, it's not everyone, but typically, a lot of times, the upper echelon dismiss, they rationalize, uh, because they are considered the intellectual, they're considered the trendsetters, all these other things, and they often rationalize, deduce out, uh, you know, things. And so uh, it's the people that are the outcasts that are really broken and hurting that seem to receive a message uh, of hope, if, you, if we could say it that way. Uh, these shepherds also signify, again, the future of Jesus' ministry, which I just, which I just share with you, his teaching. Um, you know, sheep, sheep might have been lowly animals, but they were very special animals in the Jewish culture. Uh, if you think about it, it uh, the, the sheep tied in with the sacrificial system, uh, Jesus would be what? He would be the sacrificial lamb. And so there's a connection there. So Jesus was entering in our world to fulfill his identity as, as the lamb of God um, who came to what? To take away the sin of the world. Okay, so these shepherds could have been tending sheep that were going to be used in the sacrificial, uh, the sacrificial process, uh, which, which again... Uh, drew them back to the whole Passover, um, you know, so, so that's, you know, Jesus, the message coming to the shepherds uh, really kind of foreshadows or kind of uh, ties that biblical thread to Jesus, who he was going to minister to and who he was, his kind of his identity, the sacrificial uh, lamb of God. And that's how shalom, that's how true peace, shalom uh, in the Hebrew language and culture, that's how that word uh, would con- that concept encapsulate the completeness and wholeness of God's original creation. So he was the one that was truly bringing the peace which the angels was proclaiming. So probably all of these reasons that God sent, uh, you know, came to the shepherds, okay? And it certainly reminds us that God's favor is not based on human standards. It, it, it definitely reminds us, because I, let's be honest, guys, again, would you really pick the shepherds? Would you think that would be the group that God would send the most incredible message to? And, it, and just to kind of do a little foreshadowing, kind of fast forward to the Easter, remember the resurrection, um, Jesus uh, gives the message to women to go back to tell the disciples, to go back to tell people that he is, the, the, he is risen from the dead. The angels, I'm sorry. The angels was, you know, why are you here? And, and, and they said, well, we're here to see if Jesus is like, he's not here, you know, so go and tell that he is risen, right? And so, and Jesus was the first to talk to the women. And so I say that because women were looked at kind of like as shepherds in this culture as well. They were looked at, you know, they didn't really have a word, uh, meaning that uh, when they spoke, their, their word wasn't really trusted. Uh, they didn't have a voice. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. And so again, it's God's way of just the way he does things. It's kind of this upside down, inside out philosophy that according to human standards it doesn't make sense but to God it does right and so that's you know we look at this and we see that Jesus God comes to the shepherds to say you know there's hope peace joy and love that's coming that Jesus brings so peace is not based on class it's not based on position or occupation but it's based on God's purpose and God's design uh, to bring good news and cause great joy for all people. So a couple of things we want to look at. As shepherds lead us into several insights. Uh, a couple of things we just want to share with you. Number one, it, if we could just pick back up on this, it says, uh, or it talks about, or we can see, I should say, that peace comes in the midst of storms, okay? Um, 
again, we talk about 2020 being a pretty crazy year. Uh, first of all, have you ever experienced a hurricane? Maybe some of you experienced being in a hurricane. We've studied in school and things like that about hurricanes, and you know that there's the eye of the hurricane. And you know that the, a hurricane is a very powerful storm that uh, begins out at sea, and if it hits land, it just creates incredible devastation. But there's something called the eye of the hurricane, which many of you know, many of you have studied this and understand what that means. Uh, but as what they say is, uh, and maybe some of you experienced this, but what they say is when a hurricane hits land, and, and, or even when it's out to sea, the, in the eye of the hurricane, it's very peaceful. It's extremely peaceful. But then even on the back side, there's incredible destruction. So on the front side, there's destruction. And even on the back side of the eye, it's even almost even more powerful is what they tell us, is what some meteorologists would, would say. So we, we see that within weather. We kind of see that within life. And I get that that's kind of an illustration that we've seen before. And you may think that's a pretty trite illustration, but I think there's a lot of truth to it, you know, in a sense that, that um, you know, what hurricanes do we experience? You know, that you may be experiencing in your life right now. The, you know, some of the things that, that's happening within your life, the things that's, you know, uh, maybe you may be experiencing that is very, um, that is very um, chaotic, very hectic, very troubling. Uh, you know, you may be experiencing some of those things when you, in your life, but um, the, the peace, the peace is like that eye of the hurricane. And when we discover that, we, 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 we have this sense of, you know, this, this sense of everything's going to be okay. When we experience the peace of God, we know that everything's going to be okay. It's like, and again, I keep talking about this, but it's, it's getting our eyes off the temporal and focused on the eternal. And it's amazing how us humans can be so... Uh, that happens so subtly uh, within our lives. We, we can focus so much on the temporal. Again, I get that our physical beings, our, you know, uh, our spiritual beings to some degree, uh, our physical beings, our mental uh, capacities and things like that, can, we can look at those things, but they're so temporal. It's so temporal. And, and, and it's so easy to get locked in on that. And, and what happens is we become overwhelmed with stress. We become overwhelmed with anxiety because really there's, there, when we focus on that, there's no hope. But when we place our eyes on Jesus and we understand that uh, through his birth, through his identity, through his death and his resurrection, he brings peace. That is, that is, you know, that is something that he brings. And that was part of the great news uh, to these shepherds and to mankind that through Jesus, God's peace would, would come and humanity uh, could experience God's peace. OK, and we focus then on the eternal. We don't focus on the temporal, but we focus on the eternal. And we realize that, that, that life is just a brief glimpse. And for some of us that are getting older, man, we, that, that it continues to be reinforced into us on a daily basis where we see that life is very, very brief. OK, but wherever you find yourself today, let, let me just encourage you that Jesus shows up in the middle of those storms. Uh, whatever your life may be threatened about, and he brings peace, and he brings hope, and he brings joy uh, to us. In the middle of Israel's dark night of Roman oppression and centuries of suffering, which we talked about last week, they may be asking, where is God? You know, where is he at? And this news came which, which brought great peace. Okay, the Messiah, the promised one, uh, the prophecy has come to fulfillment. So in all of the circumstances of all of our struggles, this is where God showed up. And this is where God literally shows up in your life too. Um, you know, he shows up for us in our pain, our fears, our confusion, um, you know, our grief, our loss, our uncertainty. He shows up and what does he bring? He brings peace, okay? The second thing that happens is peace defies our, defies our circumstances, okay? Uh, you know, some may say, well, that's great for you to say because you may not be experiencing what I'm experiencing right now. You may not have experienced the news I just experienced, and I'm really hurt. And, I, and again, I get that. And I'm not trying to devalue or minimize what you may be going through. But the truth of the matter is it does defy, peace defies all circumstances because this is what comes from God. God promises us that. So regardless of what we're facing, what you may be going through without, value, without devaluing or minimizing it, God brings peace. Listen to what Paul says in Philippians 4, chapter 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Don't worry about anything, but in everything, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, and the peace of God which surpasses every thought, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Paul says in everything, 
in everything through prayer and petition with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known by God. I, you know, I don't pretend to fully know and understand what's taking place within your life, but I do know that there is the power in prayer, that there's power in prayer and peace comes to us. Transformation happens. Transformation uh, grows from gratitude, okay? And it's not the power from, from getting what we want or, or trying to convince God what we want, but it's listening. It's, it, it, it's, it's, it's focusing again on the eternal. It's focusing on God. The power of prayer happens uh, in this experience of, you know, in this experience as peace uh, changes our perspective, it changes everything. It enables us to focus on the eternal. And that's exactly what happens. And we begin uh, to receive that peace from God. And that's what God promises us. That's what, that's what God promised so many thousands of years ago when Jesus came to earth in the incarnation where he became flesh, that we would experience and have this sense of peace. The second or the third thing is this. Peace is a person. No ifs, ands, buts around it. Peace is in a person. Ephesians 2.14 says this, For He is our peace. For He is our peace. Isaiah 9, uh, uh, chapter 9, verses 6 through 7, that's read so much during this time, but we could read this year, yearly, or, or uh, uh, on a daily basis. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on His shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast and his, his, the dominion will be vast and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of God, of, or I'm sorry, the he will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and, and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. It may sound political. It may have some politically sounding tones to this message. And you can see why, because G the Jews were looking for their political oppression to be released, right? They were looking to be, you know, that's why they missed the Messiah. Many of them missed the Messiah because they were looking for this political oppression to be released. But that's not what it's about, because most of all, the child was born. This son is who's giving. Jesus is the one that's giving us his peace and he brings the power and rule of his peace into our personal lives he's giving us the peace of the kingdom of God Matthew 11 28 30 says this uh, verse 28 through 30 says come to me all of you who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest all of you take up my yoke and learn from me because I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for yourself for my yoke is easy and my burden is light that's where Jesus is. The peace comes in a person of Jesus. He is the one that gives us this sense of peace. He is the one that changes our perspective and places our focus not on the temporal, but on the eternal. And that's when we truly experience peace in Him. Guys, we're not going to find peace in politics. Even though, again, we fall in that same trap like the Jews did. We look at politics and sometimes we believe that politics is what's going to save the world. It's, it's not. And, and regardless, it doesn't matter if it's politics. It could be something else. It could be relationships. It could be money. It could be, um, it could be sex. It could be alcohol. It could be drugs. It could be all these other things that we look at that we, because we're hurting inside and we want peace so bad. And we look to these things and we make them idols. We make, them, we make them as if they're going to produce something that they're never going to be able to produce. And that's what an idol is. Peace comes in a person, and that is Jesus Christ. That was the message to the shepherds so many thousands of years ago. And that is the same message that comes to us today, right now, that this peace is in a person, the person of Jesus Christ. He is where we experience true peace. He is where we, we are overwhelmingly... Um, given this sense of peace. If we look to the eternal and we keep our eyes focused on the eternal, focused upon him, we will experience peace regardless of what we're experiencing in and around us. I hope you experience that peace. Not only the hope that we talked about last week, but also the peace that comes this time of the year, especially through the birth of Jesus Christ. It, it reminds us again of who Jesus is and what he was about and the promise that God the Father has given us through his son, Jesus. I hope you have an awesome week, but more importantly, I hope that you find peace in Jesus. I hope you stay with us. I hope you stay with us in this Advent series, and we will see you back here next week. Have an awesome week.
Sing it loud.